look at what the biggest factors are that are preventing us from ramping down all fossil fuel production because I, I don't think it's it's realistic from the consumers at the moment for us to just you know for people to stop flying or to do those the really big things that may not be a really big thing but is it, I, I think it is realistic I mean I honestly think it is realistic I mean not maybe not to stop flying totally but massively yeah. to cut down that is totally realistic but wouldn't it be wouldn't it be more realistic for there to be a, a fairer tax on flying so that it's it's not penalizing say like you know a traveler that just wants to go off on their trip of a lifetime compared to people with a second home that are jetting off every other weekend mm -hmm. Um, no, no, I mean, we totally need that systemic change. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. Um, but, you know, pending that systemic change, you know, we have to just stop doing our bit to wreck the planet. Mm -hmm. um, and that means you start with the big stuff first. The big stuff is the flying, the big stuff is diet, the big stuff is surface travel. The, these are the, the three big changes we can make as consumers. The rest, by comparison, yeah, I'm not saying it's insignificant, but it's very small by comparison to those big changes. And those big changes we make as consumers are very small by comparison to the structural changes we yeah. need to make as citizens. It yeah. is as citizens we are most powerful. For God's sake, this is what Extinction Rebellion and the youth climate strikes have just shown us. This is why we've had the government declaring a climate emergency. Mm. Because we acted as citizens, not just as consumers. Absolutely. So, so what are these, the biggest <coughs> factors then to, to seriously ramp down fossil fuel production? What, what are the key factors? So, so yeah, so, so in, in, in that case, those two things I mentioned were specifically on preventing climate breakdown. I mean, there's all sorts of other things we need to do to prevent the wider ecological breakdown, Earth systems breakdown, caused by material resource consumption in general. But... Mm -hmm. To prevent climate breakdown, yeah, leaving fossil fuels in the ground is absolutely the crucial thing. Now, you know, all the technologies we need to replace them as fuel are already there. Yeah. You know, there's one or two material issues, but, you know, in terms of, sort of what do we replace plastics with, that's a different issue. But in terms of fossil fuel, um, you know, we could do this tomorrow technologically. It's the political will that, that is missing. Yeah. Um, and... And that means we need to continue these extremely effective mass mobilizations in order to generate the political will because civil disobedience is the only thing that does. It's absolutely essential to political change. You cannot have major political change without it. Of course, you need all the party politics and stuff running alongside that. You need the representative democracy and stuff, but the, the catalyst that makes it happen is civil disobedience. Yeah. That is absolutely crucial. So we need to continue and expand that. Now, the science is telling us very clearly, the IPCC, um, as well as um, other scientists independently of it, that even if we were to cut almost all our greenhouse gas emissions tomorrow, just like that, with a cliff edge like that, we would almost certainly still exceed 1.5 degrees of global heating and possibly two degrees. And that's because of the lag in the atmospheric system, it's because we've left it so late. So they say we also need carbon drawdown. We need to draw down carbon dioxide, which has already been released, into the atmosphere. And until now, the most uh, popular options were either this bioenergy with carbon capture and storage or direct air capture mm -hmm. machines. And there's huge problems with both of those options. Bioenergy with carbon capture and storage basically means plantations, which you then, uh, you then harvest, you burn the wood in power stations, you theoretically capture the carbon dioxide from that burning, bury it in geological formations, and in theory you've created negative emissions, except you haven't. Because <coughs> in, uh, you're going to do one of, uh, of two things in creating plantations on that scale. You are either going to replace a huge amount of arable land and create global starvation, or you're going to replace a huge amount of natural ecosystems and create global ecological meltdown. Yeah, but that's not a win-win. No, no, no. It's a lose-lose. <laughs> um, and the central scenario is, um, of people have been talking about, is, uh, which is AR 4.6, um, which is... Um, 
you, you're talking about an area three times the size of India being planted up with plantations. It's an absolute catastrophe. Yeah. But also, in converting that land, in churning the soil, in cutting the trees and the rest of it, you're going to release more greenhouse gases than you're ever likely to save through carbon capture and storage. So it, it, it just doesn't make any sense at all. It's a total disaster. Why anybody thought this was a good idea utterly defeats me. Is that going ahead? Is that something that governments have signed up to? Luckily, there's not a great deal of... There's a great deal of talk. Yeah. There's less activity so far. The the other, so the other thing is, is the direct air capture, building these machines which are going to suck carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Huge amounts of steel and concrete required. If you're going to do that on the scale where it's going to make a significant difference, the infrastructure you need to build could tip us over the threshold anyway and become one of the climate tipping points. Yeah. So, so what do you do instead? Because we need to draw down this carbon dioxide. I was well, going to ask him that question. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out that um, rewilding yeah. is the amazing fix which, which is going to do this for us. Because uh, over the last couple of years, there's been a m whole load of new science showing that ecological restoration, allowing forests to come back, peat bogs to come back, salt marshes, mangroves, has a massive potential beneficial climate impact because all that involves drawing down carbon from the atmosphere, turning it into organic carbon in the form of wood, in the form of saturated soils, um, in, <clears throat> in the form of root biomass, all the rest of it, which then um, um, locks up that carbon and would help us, could provide about one third of the total mitigation potential. It's absolutely huge. It turns out that restoring certain animal populations is also crucial. If wolves were allowed to reach their historic levels in North America once again, they would um, sequester every year the equivalent of emissions of about 50 million cars. But I know, isn't it incredible? By suppressing the herbivory of deer and moose, and allowing forests to grow um, uh, f faster. Um, if Donald Trump. As well. Uh, well, that would be, be <laughs> a, 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 that would definitely help to prevent the climate climate <laughs> yeah. breakdown from yeah. taking anyway, place. Anyway, wolves aren't that bad. They're yeah. not going to eat yeah. anyone. We can't have that message going out. No, 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 no. Wolves, I mean, you're far more likely. species are cool. I mean, even in the wolf hotspots in North America, you're far more likely to be killed by a vending machine than you are by a wolf. <laughs> This is a scientific fact. Um, By a vending every machine. Year, every year, I mean, uh, wolf attacks are about once every 30 years in North America. Every year, people are killed by vending yeah. machines. They are dangerous. They, 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 they could be about to pounce they, on you at any time. They form gangs, yeah. You, you never know when you're going to... Well, people shake them to get the money out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so... Wow. Um, and it's, it's, not, it's not funny. This is tragic. This is a, this is a terrible tragedy. Um, but, but the... Um, uh, but, you know, wolves actually... Keep, keep, keep away from people for yeah. obvious reasons. Who wouldn't? Um, but the, um, and, and it turns out that predatory fish are absolutely crucial for the carbon sequestration on salt marshes because they suppress the populations of snails and herbivorous crabs, which eat the vegetation that holds the salt marsh together. And so it goes on. It turns out that these trophic cascades mm. are absolutely crucial to carbon sequestration around the world. So... What do we do to prevent climate breakdown? We restore ecosystems and we bring magnificent wildlife back. Yes. What's not to like? <laughs>